creating this part, the first thing that I want you to realize is that this part is created in the metric file. In Inventor, the easiest way is to come up and create your new file, go to the metric template, and select standard MMIPT. Once you've created that, what we're going to do is start this off out of the stock material. I'd like to start this off on the XY plane, and I'm going to try to draw into the positive X, positive Y quadrant. So I'm going to pan down a little bit and create a rectangle. That's the entire height, the entire width of whatever it is I'm looking for. For this part, hopefully you can see that I've got 100 millimeters wide and I've got 65 millimeters tall. 100 millimeters wide, 65 millimeters tall. Once I've got that, I'll go ahead and click on front view so I can see the entire shape. I said a minute ago we're going to cut this thing out of solid stock, so I'm going to go ahead and finish sketch. Next thing we're going to do is try to extrude the entire part into the screen. So into the negative Z, our total depth of 50 millimeters. One thing that you'll notice when you're doing metric parts is when you put it into our isometric view, it's going to lay it on its side. I want to try to reorientate that into a way that kind of resembles the shape that I'm trying to create. I'm going to put a new sketch on the front. First thing I like to do is try to push back these two side areas. To do that, I'm going to create a two-point rectangle on both sides. I'm going to use the collinear tool to level their bottoms. And I'm going to use the equal tool on their bottoms. I can now put on a couple dimensions to fully constrain this. I can see from this drawing right now that I have 15 millimeters worth of the base. So from here to here, I have 15 millimeters. And then I'm going to have to add 15 millimeters into the center of that hole and then 15 millimeters over to the part. So 15 millimeters plus 15 millimeters. That should fully constrain the part for me. I can see fully constrained down here at the bottom, and in 2015 I can also see a thumbtack on the sketch that tells me that it's fully constrained and I don't have any missing dimensions. I'll go ahead and finish sketch and I'm going to extrude this part back. What I want you to do is know that we're going to cut this, but I want you to try to figure out how much we're going to try to cut this back. It is going to be a math problem. I know that I've got 50 millimeters total, and I know that I want to keep 15 millimeters remaining. I have 50 millimeters total and 15 millimeters remaining. Figure out how much to cut back. Once I have that cut back, the next thing I'm going to do is try to cut the front face back. I'll create a new sketch in the front. I think I'm going to section off the bottom, just the section that I want to push back. I'll finish sketch. I'm going to extrude that face as a cut. And it's the same thing. I have a 50 millimeter total and 46 is what I want to have remaining. Figure out the math. Now that I have this shape, the next thing I'm going to go ahead and do is cut that slot area into the main body. I'll create a new sketch in the front. I'm going to create a two-point rectangle and a three-point arc that is tangent to both my vertical lines. I'll now put on a couple of dimensions. I know that I have a 12 millimeter radius and from the bottom up, I have 25 millimeters to the center point of the circle. Next thing we're going to do is try to center the slot from side to side. I'm going to use the vertical tool to constrain the middle of my circle, or middle of my arc, to the middle of the base. That should fully constrain my sketch, and I'll extrude cut both profiles all. Next thing we want to do is put the fillets onto the shape. If you notice, the note one tells us that all fillets are 15 millimeters. Fill it all four edges. Now that I have them all filleted, I'll go ahead and chamfer these two edges. It tells me in note two that chamfers are at 45 degree, 15 millimeter by 15 millimeter. Next thing I'm going to do is produce the holes. Create a new sketch on this bottom plate. And you should notice with 15 millimeters over and 15 millimeters back, our circle should share the same center points with our arc. I'm going to use the point tool to create center points for both of those holes. I'll now use the hole tool with a diameter of 
12 millimeters through all and the point tool should have automatically selected both holes. Create a new sketch on the side. Create the last remaining hole and do a cut all. Figure out what the diameter is, figure location, use the hole tool and create them. You now should have a completed part.